Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the unforgiving servant, found in the Gospel of Matthew. Let's take a look. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a king, who would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to take the account, one was brought to him that owed him ten thousand talents. Matthew eighteen twenty three to 24 First, this is difficult to explain, much less calculate, but a talent is both a unit of weight and a measure of something's value. A weight would be placed on one side of a scale, and precious metals, generally gold or silver, would be put on the other side. A talent of gold would be how much gold it took to equal the talent weight. Because this parable doesn't say what precisely is owed, we can suppose that it was probably gold. There's a lot of confusion over how much a talent weighs. Like many ancient methods of measuring weight, it wasn't standardized, and I've seen estimates from 34,200 grams to only 681, the approximate weight of 100 denarii. Because this is a large weight in any case, I'm going with the smallest of those numbers, or about a pound and a half. So each estimated down talent of gold would be worth in today's money in gold market almost $45,900, and this man owed 10,000 of them, a sum of almost $459 million. Ouch! Now, this is assuming that what's being measured is gold. Very often it would be silver being measured instead, which would alter the total to just over $5,300,000. Still, far too much for a normal person to pay back in their lifetime. In any case, it was an absurd amount of money to owe someone. And as he had not wherewith to pay it, his lord commanded that he should be sold, and his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. Matthew 18.25 The ancient Israelites had a practice which they referred to as slavery, but which was really closer to a type of indentured servitude in which a person would work voluntarily for a set period in payment of a debt they owed, no longer than 49 years regardless of the size of the debt, though the length of the service could be shortened or concluded if the debt was paid before the end of the final year. In this case, though, that obviously wasn't going to happen with a debt this huge. But that servant falling down besought him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay it all. And the lord of that servant, being moved with pity, let him go, and forgave him the debt. Matthew eighteen twenty six to 27 When the servant begs for mercy, the king actually tells him that he no longer needs to pay the money back. This is an absolutely amazing offer by the king, who has lost tons of money to this guy. In other parables, Jesus implies that a person who is forgiven a large amount should be the most grateful. However... But when that servant was gone out, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him a hundred pence, and laying hold of him, throttled him, saying, Pay what thou owest. Matthew 18.28 Again, denarii are being referred to here, though it's translated as pence. The amount this second man owes isn't a small sum, a few months' worth of wages, but it's also not even one percent of what the first servant used to owe. Keep in mind, the first servant is off the hook now. He doesn't need to worry about paying the king back any more. He should be celebrating with his wife and kids, not desperately trying to scrounge more money everywhere he can. And his fellow servant falling down besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt. Matthew eighteen twenty nine to 30 Servant 2 pleads with servant 1 in the same way, but servant 1 turns a deaf ear to him and prosecutes him to the fullest extent of the law. Now his fellow servants, seeing what was done, were very much grieved, and they came and told their lord all that was done. Then his lord called him and said to him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all the debt because thou besoughtest me. Shouldst not thou then have had compassion also on thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion on thee? And his lord, being angry, delivered him to the torturers until he paid all the debt. Matthew eighteen thirty one to 34 That's about as clear as a bell. If we want to be forgiven, we should also forgive others. So also shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. Matthew 18.35 Again, heart refers to the mind and the will in the New Testament, which means we need to make a conscious decision to forgive others when we feel they've wronged us. Next, the Pharisee and the tax collector. 
That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.